Welcome viewer this is Farmers Check and today we're in Kapsaret sub county and I'm Kiprono Brian. I'm Karo Chumba and you're welcome to our Farmers Check program. Today we are going to see the silage making in the Willis Kirua farm in Kapsaret and we are happy today to announce to that we have two silage making in terms of what? Uh, in terms of uh, preparing grass using hots and kikuyu grass whereby we know kikuyu grass is among us the best uh, nutritious uh, grass to our animals and mostly it, it contains a, a larger percentage in protein content and we know it is good in production of milk. Another history about the oats is that the oats you're seeing here it took only three months from month of May to date of August and funny enough it's cheaper, easy to make and a small amount of piece of land can make good number of votes. You're welcome. Aya, kwa majina mimi naitwa Willy Kirwa. Mimi ni mklima katika Kapseret, katika kaunti ya Wasingishu. Nafikiri hii shamba ambayo mnaiona ni shamba langu ambayo nimeweza kuanzisha miaka kumi iliyopita nikifanya mambo ya dairy farming ambayo nimeona ya kwamba imeweza kunisaidia kwa sababu kazi ya dairy ni kazi mzuri ambayo wewe mwenyewe kama mkulima utaweza kufanya mambo mengi. Na kitu ambayo mimi mwenyewe nilionelea nikaona ya kwamba baada ya mimi kutembelea wakulima karibu tatu, mbili katika nchi yetu na moja katika nchi ya Israel nilijifunza mambo mengi ambayo niliona ya kwamba wacha niweze kuleta hiyo mambo yote ili mimi mwenyewe kama mkulima niweze kufunza wakulima ambayo wako katika eneo ama katika nchi yetu ya Kenya na nafikiri kwa wakati huu niko na ngombe karibu hamsini na nafikiri mmeweza kuona na wakati huu tunafanya kazi ya silage ambayo tunasema ni grass silage ambayo hatujawahi kufanya katika nchi yetu na nafikiri tunajua ya kwamba wakulima wetu wengi wana, wanapanda mambo ya oats na unaona ya kwamba kumbe oats inawezekana kutengeneza silage na wakati huu tunatengeneza silage ya oats na unaona ya kwamba oats inachukua muda wa miezi tatu peke yake na tayari utakuwa umetengeneza silage yako sasa unaona ya kwamba kwa mwaka unaweza silage karibu mara tatu kwa mwaka mzima Okay, sasawa. Nafikiri mkulima wangu wa kwanza niliweza kutembelea mkulima mmoja katika sehemu za Machakos ambaye anaitwa Chalo na niliweza kujifunza mambo mengi kwake. Baada hiyo nikaenda nje ya Israel ambaye niliweza kutembelea nje ambaye ni kafu katika ulimwengu mzima na nikajua ya kwamba kumbe kazi ya deri inawezekana katika mahali ya jangwa ama mahali ambaye inanyesha ama mahali popote katika dunia mzima. Na baada ya hiyo nafikiri nimeweza kwenda nje ya Netherlands nimejionea vile wao wanalisha ngombe na nafikiria hii teknoloji ambayo mnaona ni nyazi ni hao watu ya Netherlands kupitia watu ya SNV wameweza kutusaidia namna ya kutufunza na wakati huu sasa tunatengeneza silage pamoja nao. Mzee kufuatilia mambo ya silage kuna nyasi, kuna mahindi na hivi nyingine. Haya nafikiri ukijaribu kuona unaweza tengeneza nyazi kupitia katika oats unaweza tengeneza nyazi katika natural grass ambayo tunasema ni kiguyu grass unaweza tengeneza silage ukiwa na mahindi sasa unaona ya kwamba kila kitu ambaye ni green unaweza tengeneza silage mzuri ambayo utaweza kutumia kwa ngombe unaweza kutueleza tofauti kati ya nyasi ile na mahindi Haya nafikiri ukiona ukitengeneza silage kupitia nyazi unaona ya kwamba nyazi ni kitu ambayo inamea haraka baada ya wiki karibu tatu ama mwezi moja tayari utakuwa umetengeneza silage ya nyazi na unaona ya kwamba hii nyazi ambayo utakuwa umetengeneza iko na nutrients mingi hata utakuwa unahitaji au utakuwa unahitaji ununue dairy meal ama nini unaona ya kwamba hata kupanda lusan desmodium hii nyazi ambayo ni kikuyu grass utakuwa umepata nutrients yote ya kulisha ngombe na utapata maziwa mingi Silage naye sio mbaya lakini inataka uwe na stage ambayo una, unakata unataka uwe na stage mzuri ambayo utaweza kukata hiyo stage mzuri na uwe na mashini ambayo ina chop katika kiwango ambayo inahitajika. Na wakati una compact unaona ya kwamba lazima uwe na machines ambayo zinakanyaga ambayo inatoa hewa yote ili ziweze kuruzu hewa ingie ndani alafu iweze kuharibika. Zika mkulima mashuhuri katika subcounty ya Kapseret. Unaeleza nini wakulima wenzako? Kwa hiyo mmoja wa walio karibu na mheshimiwa Pato. Unaeleza nini? Aya nafikiri e, wakulima katika kaunti yetu ya Wasingijo naeleza hao ya kwamba sisi kama wakulima lazima tufanye kazi na tuweze kufuatilia mambo ambayo wataalamu wanasema na tukiweza kufuatilia haya mambo yote unaona ya kwamba sisi kama wakulima tutaweza kufaulu kwa sababu tukiweza kufuatilia mambo ya management ama record keeping mambo ya um, kufanya mambo ya AI at least ufanye examination mzuri kwa wakati mzuri na uweze kulisha ngombe ama kufanya breeding utaweza kufaulu na ninajua ya kwamba kama kaunti hii yetu ya Wasingishu tukiweza kulisha ngombe tunaona ya kwamba hata katika nchi yetu ya Kenya tutaweza kuongoza kwa sababu tuko na nyazi tuko na mvua tuko na kila kitu mzuri
je mnazuma gani kwa masuala ya kutengeneza maziwa yani processing ya maziwa Nafikiri kwa wakati huu sisi bado tuna supply maziwa kwa makampuni na nafikiri tunge, tunatarajia kuongea na watu ya county government yetu ili tuweze kujifunza namna ya kupack maziwa kwa sababu tuk, sisi kama wakulima tukiweza kuungana katika cooperative moja na tukiweza kufanya mambo ya value addition kama wakulima ama cooperative ambayo tumeweza kuungana pamoja nao unaona ya kwamba tutaweza kufaulu kwa sababu tukifanya ma, uh, value addition kwa maziwa hapo ndio mahali ya kwamba wakulima wataweza kupata faida Aya, nafikiri hii training center ambayo tuko naye hapa unaona ya kwamba sisi tunafanya ma, tunafunza wa wakulima mambo ya practical kwa sababu wakulima wengi wameweza kufunzwa mambo ya theory na unaona ya kwamba mkulima akiweza kufunzwa mambo ya practical huyo mkulima ataweza kuelewa kila kitu ambaye inahitajika katika shamba lake Naam je tumeshuhudia kwamba mkona ageni kutoka pande za sector Kenya Nafikiri wakulima ambayo tumekuwa nao siku ya leo unaona ya kwamba wameweza kufurahia na kwa kweli wameweza kujifunza mambo mengi kwa sababu hata wao hawako wanajua kwamba kumbe nyazi ama kipindi gazi inatengenezwa hivi sasa. Sasa unaona ya kwamba wameweza kujifunza mambo mengi ambayo hata wao wameweza kujifunza namna ya kutengeneza ambayo hawako wanatengeneza. Unaona ya kwamba wameweza kufaidika kwa elimu ambayo tuko naye hapa. Tutueleze jinsi ya kutengeneza oats kutoka kupandwa Aya sasa sawa. Nafikiri e, sisi kama wakulima kitu ya kwanza ambayo tunahitaji tunasema ya kwamba wewe we, we mwenyewe kama mkulima ukitaka kutengeneza ama ukitaka kupanda oats. Kitu ya kwanza tunasema lima shamba yako sawa sawa, piga aro sawa sawa. Baada ya kupiga aro tunasema ya kwamba utahitaji planda ambaye ni mzuri. Planda aina ya planda ambayo huwa unatumia kupanda ama wakulima huwa wanatumia kupanda ngano. Na tunasema ya kwamba tunahitaji mbegu, tunahitaji fertilizer hiyo yote utakuwa unachanganya alafu unaanza kuspread kwa shamba baada ya hiyo e, unaona ya kwamba wakati mvua itaka i, wakati mvua ikinyesha unaona ya kwamba utakuwa unahitaji dawa ambayo ni 72 e, ambayo utakuja una spray ile weeds peke yake sasa nafikiri wewe kama mkulima tayari utakuwa umejua namna ya kupanda oats je na upanda wa nyasi Nafikiri ukijaribu kuangalia hii oats unapanda kama vile unapanda ngano. Haina tofauti kwa sababu ile seed drill ambayo inapanda ni ile ya ngano. Sasa haina tofauti yote. Measurements yake tayari imesetiwa kwa hiyo mashini ambayo inaenda pamoja. Tena nyasi tuleze juu nyasi kupanda kwa kiasi. Haya, nyasi ni rahisi kwa sababu hata hautahitaji ulime shamba. Ile nyasi ambayo ni kikuyu grass utakuwa una levelize shamba yako, unatoa ile makuweko ambayo ziko kwa shamba una spread CN kwa mfano tuseme kama eka moja unaweza weka 100 kg ya CN tayari nyazi yako itakuwa imemea. Kwa mkulima ambaye hana e, labda hana uwezo wa kununua CN unaona ya kwamba ile mbolea ambayo yako nayo kwa deri hiyo e, manyua ata spread kwa shamba yake pole pole na mwisho unaona ya kwamba utakuwa na kikuyu grass ambaye utalisha ngombe kwa muda wa mwaka mzima. Zee kwa kutueleza masuala ya silage ya oats na nyasi. Zee tumeona kwamba katika kule deri umetueleza kwa tofauti ya oats dry oats <coughs> na nyasi. <coughs> Tueleze manufaa ya dry hay and green hay. Aya unajaribu kuona ya kwamba ile dry hay haitakuwa na nutrients ambayo inahitaji ngombe inahitaji. Unaona itabidi at least ulete lusan ndio uweze kuongeza ili uweze kufikia kiwango ambaye ni green. Sasa unaona ya kwamba ile oats ambayo bado ni green ama nyasi ambayo ni green itakuwa na nutrients kushinda zile zile dry. Sasa unaona ya kwamba ile itakuwa na maziwa ni ile ambayo iko green. Je, utaeleza nini wakulima? Wapande nyasi kikuyu grass kwa wingi ama oats kwa wingi ama mahindi kutoka sahihi? Aya, kwa wakati huu unaona ya kwamba ile kitu ndio advice wakulima waweze kupanda nyazi kwa sababu nyazi haina gharama unaona ya kwamba cost ya production ya kutoa maziwa ukitumia kikuyu grass itakuwa cheap kwa sababu unaona hautakuwa na gharama gharama yako tu ni kuspray fertilizer peke yake lakini hii oats itapita ulime shamba ukuche ukate ufanye nini lakini sasa advice ni kwamba sisi kama wakulima waacha tupande nyazi ambayo ni natural hata ukijaribu kuangalia wazee wetu ambao waliweza kufaulu katika nje yetu walitumia nyazi ambayo ni kikuyu, kikuyu grass naam jitambulisha kwa majina <laughs> unapofanya kazi na nini umefanya ukujiji katika shamba hili la kilo eh, um, jina langu ni Hilary Ngetich mimi ni mkaji wa Eldoret uh, kijiji cha Kapseret mimi pia ni mkulima mdogo ambaye najaribu kujifunza mambo mazuri ambayo yanahusiana na ukulima na siku ya leo nimepata nafasi ili nikuje ni angalie kazi ambayo kirwa amefanya kuhusiana na ukulima. Mimi ni mfanyikazi wa serikali 
ambaye pia e, najua kazi ya ukulima ni mzuri katika maisha ya ya kisasa. Uh, Kirwa ni mkulima mmoja ambaye tumemjua kwa muda mrefu wakati alipoanza na ngombe kidogo ukulima wa watu wadogo wadogo mpaka wakati huu ambapo tunamjua kama mkulima ambaye ame, ame, um, amefanya vizuri um, kwa, kwa kazi ile ambayo afanya na, na kwa, katika jamii tunamjua mba, kama mkulima ambaye anawahitaji uh, vijana uh, kina baba na kina mama wakuja washuhudie na wajifunze kutoka na kazi yake kama eh, sana sana kwa kijiji hiki Kapsere tunaangalia ukulima wa ngombe wa maziwa. Um, ukiangalia kwamba sisi tunaishi karibu na Eldore Town ambapo um, maziwa yanahitajika kwa wingi. Na tukijua kwamba pia uh, town yenyewe ina, inaendelea kukua na watu wanaendelea kuwa uh, mahitaji ya chakula, vyakula, maziwa aswa uh, ni, ni kitu ambacho ni cha maana sana. Kwa wakulima wachanga kama sisi kuna changamoto mingi. La kwanza ni um, kupata kujua ama ujuzi wa kufanya ukulima. Uh, na wakati tulipopata kumjua Kirwa na kuwa ako na training center hapa imekuwa kwa, kwa kiasi kidogo imesaidia. Na uh, ya pili ni kwamba tuna Um, eh, capital ama, ama ile pesa ya kuanzisha ukulima na ikiwa atapata um, um, banks ambazo zinaweza kusaidia kidogo kidogo tu ili kutuwezesha kuanzisha uh, biashara ya ukulima tutafurahia changamoto mengine of course ni, ni ile kujitolea wajua pia uh, mpaka uangalie kama sisi wa Afrika mpaka uangalie mtu amefaulu ndipo uweze kuanzisha hiyo uh, um, kazi ya ukulima. kwanza tumejua namna ambavyo unaweza kukuza kuweka ngombe. Ni aina gani ya ngombe ambayo inahitajika uh, kwa maziwa mingi. Namna ya ku, kuwa, uh, kutengeneza chakula, namna ya kuweka maziwa ikiwe safi, na namna pia ya kuuza kwa sababu ukiwa huko na maziwa na ujui namna ya kufanya biashara nayo kuuza eh, uweze ukafaulu so haya ni kati ya vita even record keeping namna ya kuweka zile eh, tunaita nini uh, records eh, za, za biashara ya maziwa na kadhalika na, na pia hapa kwa kirwa pia tumeanza kujifunza mambo ya kufuka kuku eh, ya, ya ma, eh, mayai eh, na, na vitu vingine ambavyo viko kwa shamba kama mboga na kadhalika asante Nimejifunza jinsi ya kutengeneza chakula ya ngombe. Pia jinsi ya kulisha ngombe. Na pia tumeangalia manana ya oats. Hii ni mara ya kwanza kwangu hata nikiangalia eh, oats mzuri kama hii. Na jinsi ya ilipandwa na vile itatengenezwa ikuwe chakula ya ngombe. Kwa hivyo tunawaambia wakulima kwa kunyanga field days kama hizi ndi wajifunze maneno mengi ambayo inaonyeshwa nafikiri hiyo inasaidia ita, wakulima sababu huwa tunaokopa tunafikiria kwamba tukoje kwa field day wengine wanafikiria wana judge wengine wanasema kwamba atuishi hiyo kazi lakini kumbe ni Now welcome viewers back to the farmers check episode we are here with uh, Misoi our farm manager you like to explain to us how cucumbers is grown and how it's being harvested to this stage uh, introduce yourself Okay thank you so much uh, as you said my name is Solomon Misoi and I'm a consultant from uh, Elder Sirico Consultants Actually my work is uh, in the area of feed and fodder that's why we are here today and uh, as you said I'm not a farm manager I'm just a consultant but um the issue of feed and fodder uh is an area that is uh, very key in uh, dairy farming and uh, this is uh, we are working with uh, a, a farmers group a very known farmers group called Eldore Dairy Farmers Association and uh, this group has had uh, very many initiatives one of them 
is uh, this one that uh, endeavors to harvest grass, a good management of grass as a as a, as a forage for for animals. So in uh, making of grass silage, that's why uh, why we are here today. And uh, making grass silage is a new concept in Kenya, and uh, it requires a lot of keen keenness or rather a lot of uh, attention so that you make a good product at the end of the day uh, grass silage is a new concept as i've said and uh, today i just want to explain the steps involved in making a uh, grass silage first of all grass silage uh, is after planting a farmer should not allow grass to grow past the flowering stage. Why is because grass beyond flowering stage means the feed value in it has gone down. So always grass is harvested at knee high level. If it is boma roads, if it is kikuyu grass, if it is uh, any other kind of grass you harvest it uh, just about 30 centimeters from the ground, 30 to 40 centimeters for silage. And uh, in this case you harvest when it is it has not flowered that is at bloom stage where uh, it has a lot of uh, feed value and it has a lot of leaves and it is dark green in color so after harvesting we normally the, the first step is mowing that is uh, the whole process of harvesting you start with mowing and uh, there are various principles in mowing one of them uh, the most famous one is disc uh, disc mowing then uh, after mowing first even before mowing uh, sorry for that i jumped a step a farmer should check on the weather to see if the weather is uh, the conditions are dry uh, that is the best time for mowing here you check the weather and you make sure that uh, maybe two to three days are dry days so and then you cut your grass you mow and then on uh, mowing is done in the evening why mow in the evening is because in the evening the grasses have a lot of sugar through the process of photosynthesis throughout the day by evening the grasses will have uh, made a lot of sugar in it so you mow when the grasses have a lot of sugar then you, you, you leave it in the, in the farm. Tomorrow morning, when the sun has shone maybe up to 10 a.m. in the morning, you start the first tedding. That is the second process. Tedding means you spread it to dry for unif uniform drying. So you ted and you leave it in the field to dry. And then after that, there will be a second tedding, probably in the in, in in the in at 2 or at 1 pm you do a second tedding to ensure that the grass is wilting to a level we call it a level of about 40 to 45 percent of dry matter so that that grass of yours has about 40 to 45 percent dry matter you have in in simple language you have removed water and what you are remaining with you is about 40 to 45 percent of dry matter that is what the cow needs. Then after tedding for the second time, it will be, and uh, a farmer has made sure that this grass is at about 40 to 45 percent dry matter, then silaging now begins. Silaging begins by first of all raking. There is a machine that is used for raking. After tedding, spreading it all over, you need now to put the grass together for easy picking. So you use a machine uh, called a raker. The raker puts the grass in uh, long rows or heaps of uh, grass. And then after now raking, there will be another machine to pick the grass from the field. And that is called a picker, a wagon, uh, wagon picking, picking wagon. So this picking wagon will pick the grass from the field and then it takes it to the place where it will be ensiled. At the silage, at the silage site, always a farmer is advised to ensure that the, the wideness or the, the width of that silage pit is 
in conjunction or rather is uh, has good will result in good feeding speed this one is calculated using the number of animals that the farmer is feeding so that you know whether the, the width of the silage pit will, is 5 centimeters or 5 meters or 6 meters or even 10 meters so it depends on the number of animals that the farmer has so after now knowing the silage we uh, silage pit width you en ensure that you silage your 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 grasses you put them uh, you tip these tipping trailers you pick, you pour it in the tipping trailers, then the tipping trailers will take the silage to the site. From the site, they are tipped, and then uh, now the, another very important process is compaction. Compaction is very necessary in order to remove all the oxygen, because in uh, the process of fermentation, we are actually using anaerobic fermentation. We use anaerobic bacteria as opposed to aerobic bacteria so we don't want oxygen in the pit so they they will these are we compact with a heavy machine probably a shovel or a heavy tractor then after compacting and ensuring that the all oxygen is removed from the uh, from the pit you now it is now time to to cover the to cover the pit with the plastic plastic is uh, does, does not allow oxygen to pass through so you you put two plastics side by side and then uh, you are allowed to 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 cover the one 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 plastic on one side will go across and then the other side also will come and then we, you will cover with an overall overall plastic the way you remove oxygen you ensure that you 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 start with a u u shaped uh, process so that the, the the machine will be moving and it it will be tilted to towards the center so it compresses the sides well this side and the other side they are are compressed well so that you don't have the sides being uh, not compacted well so after compacting ensuring that you use the u side until now you have the last maybe the last uh, trailer to tip on on the on the on the on the pit you now make ensure that the shape again comes curved. is curved so that it becomes like a, a small hill so and then after ensuring that you, you end with a curved uh, shape you compact for the last time and now you you pull the two plastics together and an overall plastic on top and then you tighten the plastic either using uh, all the tires or using uh, some blocks of wood or uh, Probably mostly in Kenya we use soil. You put soil on top of the plastic. That soil will be heavy and it will continue to press down the the, the grass. So with that, after f uh, six weeks, you will be good to start harvesting your silo. Oh, thank you.